scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In the Old Testament, the first idea of Satan, the first idea of the operation of evil was revealed in what we call the fall of man. Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 4. Please write it down for reference. The fall of man. The Bible tells us that Satan was absolutely responsible for the fall of man. You find that in Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 4. There are many stories in the Old Testament. But because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. I will just use two or three references and then that would suffice for this discussion. So, the first capture of the reality of darkness, evil, Satan, and a discussion that related to that. In fact, according to scripture, it was not only Adam that had a discussion with Satan. Even God had a discussion with Satan. Is that true? Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 4. The second story very quickly captured from the Old Testament as we see is the story of Job. Now, classically speaking, in theology, the story of Job is believed to be um, the most, the greatest expression of the operation of Satan and darkness over man. Because when you read the entire 42 chapters of Job, the most important, in my opinion, of the 42 chapters is chapters 1 and 2 and then chapters 42. Chapters 1 and 2 talks about the two levels of his test. Is that true? The test on his wealth and his children. Then chapter 2, the test on his health. And then chapter 42, we see that it was the restoration of Job. Every other thing that happened in between Elihu, the story, all of that is important. The reason why I'm putting it before others is I know that the book of Job, from a chronological arrangement of scripture, in as much as we know, comes before Psalms. But um, if the Bible were to be arranged properly, from its, its chrono chronologically, the book of Job is believed to be somewhere in between Genesis and Exodus. Are we together? I hope you know that the arrangement of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation as we know now is not accurate in terms of its chronological arrangement. Nothing is exactly wrong with it, but in terms of its chronology means as the events occurred. Sometimes when you need to go into the deeper layer of Bible study, you will have to arrange the Bible chronologically to now make sense as you explore. In fact, it is one of the ways we study Scripture. Maybe one day we'll discuss it here, how to study the Bible. There are many templates for studying the Bible. Number one, you can study the Bible according to the various books. And the Bible is classified according to various books. Number one, there is a Torah or the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. Are we together? And then there is what is called the poetic books. All of the books that have to do with poetic descriptions, Ecclesiastes, you know, Proverbs, and all of that. And then we have what we call the prophets, the major and the minor prophets. Are we together? And then we have um, 
what we call the Gospels, the four books that represent the Gospel. We have the book of Acts, we have the epistles, then we have Revelation. We also have Judges and all of these, all the other books that, the, that, that chronicle the events of kings, beginning from King Saul. Because it was not God's desire that men would have an earthly king. He wanted to be king directly over them. But because of their desire wanting a king, God used Samuel to anoint Saul. And then you have lots of other kings that ruled Israel. Josiah and Joash being the youngest. Josiah ruled at age 9. Joash ruled at age 8. We have a lot of other people like that. So when you read the Bible, you can study the Bible based on these books. You can also study the Bible topically. Are we still learning? There is the topical study of the Bible. That means you can pick faith and study. You can pick the ministry of Jesus and study. You can pick the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, it's, it's the topical study of the Bible has proven to be the most effective. The reason is because it addresses the issue of your concern immediately. If you study the subject of faith and you gain understanding, you can begin to see the results immediately. And it will serve as a motivation and a consolation. Then there is the chronological study of Bible. The word chronos just means the passage of time. The arrangement of the chapters and the verses and the books according to the time they occurred. Hallelujah. So back to our discussion. We are examining the biblical basis for the study of Satan, demons and their operations. And we said the Old Testament has, number one, the fall of man, seen in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4. And then number two, the story of Job, the entire book of Job. But more specifically, Job chapter 1, chapter 2 and 42. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 archives the events that happened to Job. We don't have the time, we would have gone through it. But Job was a man, the Bible records, that he feared God and eschewed evil. And one day there was a gathering before the Lord. We're going to deal with that because, you see, this subject has a lot of schools of thoughts and controversial angles to it. For instance, when you read the book of Job, you will see that as at the time the sons of God went to see God, the Bible says Satan was in their midst. It already uses that name, Satan, for him, meaning he had fallen. He was never called Satan in his glorified state. His name was Lucifer. And yet the Bible says in the judgment of Satan, there was no more found a place for him in heaven. So you see, this already brings controversy as there are schools of thought that believe that Satan still has access to heaven and access to the presence of God till today. And yet others use Revelation chapter 12 to say, no way, the Bible says there is no place found for him. So let me say it up front that the discourse about the entire subject of demonology is not to create arguments, but to be able to filter the factors that are useful to guide our understanding. Are we together? We are not in a theological argument. My assignment is to filter the parts that I believe is necessary for our understanding and then we'll fire on from there. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So we see the story of Job. Number three, the third story in the Bible that talks about deliverance, of course, is the story of Israel and their captivity in Egypt. Nothing is more classic than that. Israel and their captivity and the deliverance that happened for them. Now, if you really want to study the, the context of deliverance, as it were, the deliverance of the nation of Israel, here's how you, you have to study from Genesis chapter 4 to Genesis chapter 10. It will give you, sorry, I, did I say Genesis? Exodus. Exodus, please. Exodus chapter 4. To Exodus, no, you don't have to put it, media. I'm just giving them Exodus chapter 4 down to Exodus chapter 10. It archives the entire journey. That's where you record the 10 plagues. Remember all the plagues because Moses departs from the presence of God and he goes to Pharaoh. And now he keeps returning, bringing one plague after the other. But then when you want to study the story of the deliverance out of Egypt, you begin your study from Genesis 13 
verse 17. Genesis 13, verse 17, down to Genesis 14, verse 31. Genesis 13, verse 17, down to Genesis 14, verse 31, gives you the complete story of the deliverance from Egypt and ends with the Red Sea. Hallelujah. So from the Old Testament, we see that the subject of Satan and evil and the deliverances that follow was not hidden. The fall of man, we see Satan there. The story of Job, we see Satan there. And then we see deliverance and Israel and their captivity. Now let's go to the life and ministry of Jesus quickly. So we have passed test one based on the doctrinal requirements to be able to study and teach any subject from a doctrinal standpoint. We see that in the Old Testament, now in the life of Jesus. Is there anything that relates to Satan, relates to his works, and relates to the subject of deliverance? Number one, the temptation of Jesus. The very, I, can, I can list almost everything there, but then, just for reference, the temptation of Jesus. We find that in Luke chapter 4, from verse 1 to 3. Please give it to us. Luke chapter 4, 1 to 3, then write 16 to 22. Luke chapter 4, 1 to 3, then 16 to 22. Let me just read 1 to 3. The Bible says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We are reading to verse 3. Being 40 days tempted of who? 40 days. Jesus, tempted of the devil. And the Bible says, In those days he did eat nothing, and when the days were ended, he was afterwards hungered. Verse 3. And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Let's read verse 4. And Jesus answered him. Who did he answer? And said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So you read that and you find out that Satan came to Jesus. And he came to carry out his ministry of deception his ministry of destruction, and Jesus did not ignore Satan. If Jesus did not ignore Satan, we shouldn't ignore him. Jesus would have said, Satan, I don't have any business. I am the word of God. Let me focus on my father's agenda. Jesus turned to Satan and spoke to him. He said, it is written. Number two, Jesus himself taught deliverance. Matthew chapter 12, please. Jesus taught among the many teachings, Matthew chapter 12, let's begin from verse 43, for sake of time. Here's what Jesus taught. Jesus himself taught about Satan and the fact that there was something about Satan he wanted us to know. He said, when the, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Who is giving us this information? Jesus. Next verse. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Next verse. The Bible says, Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits. More. That means there is a structure. Jesus is the one showing us that all spirits are not the same. Jesus uses the expression more wicked. That other spirits are more wicked. Seven others more wicked than himself. And the Bible says they come together as a team and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Look up. So when a man's later state is worse than the first, what is the diagnosis? <laughs> it's in your Bible. That means the devil can afflict a man, the devil can bring a condition, and from a physical standpoint, you will find out that the condition is deteriorating. Jesus is saying, let me give you perspective to that. Something may have happened that can translate into that worsening situation. Are we together? 
Jesus himself taught on the subject of deliverance. Jesus administered deliverance himself. He didn't just teach, he administered deliverance. We'll look at a few scriptures. Luke chapter 8 from verse 26. Please write it down. Luke chapter 8. The Bible says they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes. This was the story of the madman in Gadara. Well, since we've started, let's just read it. We're reading, it's a long reading to 39. Let's hurry up. Very quickly. Verse 27 now. The Bible says, And when he went forth to land, he met out of the city a certain man. Certain man means it was not a parable. That man really existed. Are we together? Which had what? Which had? You see, the word devils there, it means then that the word devil is not just the name of a person. It's a generic description. It's a character. Are we together? He says that he met a certain man who had devils. How long? So we see from this scripture that demons can remain for a long time. Time does not drive demons. And were not clothes, neither abode in any house, but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell, and fell down before him. And with a loud voice he said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the Most High? That means demons are intelligent. Did you see it there? They called Jesus by an accurate description of who he truly was. There is intelligence with demons. I beseech thee, he said, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oft times it had caught him and it kept bound with chains and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. This is an information. Because many devils were entered into him. So the Bible here reveals to us that multiple demonic spirits can coexist in a single human entity. Are we together now? That it is not only one spirit per body. As many demons, as many as a legion. These are very important information. 31. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Uh huh. And the Bible says, And there was a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he should suffer them to enter into the swine. That means it is not only human bodies, demons can enter. What else did they enter? Hmm. And he suffered them. Next verse, let's hurry up. The Bible says, And went out the devils out of the man, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran, what? Violently down a steep place, into the lake, and were choked. I'll show you why we're reading. 34. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it to the city and in the country. 35. Then when they went out to see what was done, everybody see that there are levels of deliverance. Now, this man, the spirit had left him. Is that true? But see what else they found. They came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. What was he doing? Sitting. Where? At the feet of Jesus. That is another level. The demons had left him. The man would have gone. But the Bible says his place of security was to sit at the feet of Jesus. And now something was happening to his mind. In his right mind. So the spirit leaving him was not all it took. It took him staying with Jesus and then sitting at the feet of Jesus. And as a result, something was happening to his mind. His mind was becoming right. I think we can stop there.
Luke chapter 9 from verse 37. Jesus administered deliverance himself. The Bible says, And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. This is Peter, James, and John, the Mount of Transfiguration. The Bible says, And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. Look how wicked the devil is. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly cried out, and he teared him, and he foamed again. And bruising him hardly, departed from him. And I besought your disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Everybody should be able, don't rush media, let's work together. Go to verse 40. Everybody should be able to cast out demons, but unfortunately, not everybody is able to cast out demons potentially you would think everybody should be able to cast out demons based on the authority of scripture but in experience although these guys were the disciples of jesus we see that it takes more than just being with jesus to have the ability to cast out demons they were not rebels they were people who were walking with jesus and yet the bible says i besought who thy disciples to cast him out and they could not. Verse, we are reading to 43, 41. And Jesus answered it, said, O faithless and perverse generation. Jesus is telling us what was wrong now. How long shall I be with you and permit you, he says, bring the son. I love Jesus. Ah! That after this discussion, that's what he will say too. That when you go somewhere and they tell you our family, everything, you say, bring, bring that family. I found something. Bring the son hither. Verse 42. And as he was yet coming, the demons know who is who. As he was yet coming, before he came to meet Jesus, the Bible says the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child two things happen one deliverance the other healing are you seeing that now so that man was not just he was not just demonized there were two conditions meaning that behind most sicknesses are spirits just ministering healing alone you may find out that your venture is frustrating most times in scripture you will see jesus casting out the spirit influence then releasing the power of god to correct the bodily deformity that that spirit caused are we learning now he rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father last verse and they were all amazed at the mighty power of god but while they wondered every one of the things which Jesus did, you know, he said unto his disciples, all of this, um, this kind goeth not, but by prayer and fasting. So we see that Jesus himself ministered deliverance. Is someone learning? Let's look at two more scriptures. Are you tired? Please don't be tired in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 8. Let's start from verse 1 to 3. I just wrote a few here. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse 2. The Bible says, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and healed of what? Evil spirits and infirmity. And among them there was a woman called Mary of Magdala or Mary Magdalene. How many demons came out of her? The Bible even will list it. Don't be afraid. There is the imbalance part. So you can trust me. I'm a good pilot. We will, we will arrive safely in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of whom seven went seven devils. Look at the advantage when people are delivered. Verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, 
Herod Steward, and Susanna, and many others, the Bible says, which ministered unto him of their... That means there are partners, there are helpers that the devil know that will stand with you and stand by you. And this spirit will stop them. It was on the strength of their deliverance. If you are wondering where Jesus got money from, read your Bible. The Bible is saying those women that have been impacted, they have been delivered. They went back and did whatever they did. They had results and they returned back. Man of God, this is the most, this is the most scriptural way of funding for ministry. That you change lives, you impact people, they go back, they will, not everybody will be too grateful to ignore you. If people are really, really changed, seven demons out of this woman, and she went back with her sound mind, and she said, no, I will not forget the man that was used to save me and deliver me. And the Bible says they came and ministered to him. When you are not changing lives and you want people to bless you, in my opinion, it's not sincere. I can almost look at it as fraud. In as much as you don't pay a man of God, you can't pay for the anointing. But I'm saying sincerely, let me give you a secret. Spend your life blessing people, not anticipating that you're blessing so that they will give you something. Let them have genuine results in their lives and leave them to surprise you. It's cheaper than manipulation. So if you, if you are finding out why Jesus and how Jesus became so blessed that he had a treasurer, it's not superstition. It was not every day they went to the river to get money out of the mouth of a fish. It would be a stupid way of thinking to believe that every day a fish will keep giving you coins. The classic way, that was a miracle to show something. The standard scriptural way of raising money for ministry is not, a, a fish will not be eating coin every day. It was just a... You know what God is teaching in that scripture? That there will be moments of supernatural intervention. But that is not God's classic way of doing it. God cannot be helping you by intervention every day. Intervention means a principle was violated and a consequence came from it. Now the mercy of God is coming to bridge. So, waiting by a seaside. How did I get here? Waiting by a seaside... For a fish, so you squeeze that fish, wouldn't the fish eat? It was just used for a miracle. Impact people. Bless them sincerely. Let them encounter salvation, healing. Let the word transform their minds. Let them go back with the word and produce results. And I guarantee you, the spirit of God who anointed you to bless them is the same spirit that will compel them to come back and bless you. In fact, let me say this, let me say this, respectfully to preachers and men of God, building men is greater than building structures. Structures are fine, don't get me wrong, structures are great, but let your structure not be finer than the men you are building. A building can be destroyed. Government can bring a bulldozer in five minutes and collapse everything. But you build men, and the men will build the structure. And if it falls, they will build it again. And if it falls, they will build it again. Matthew chapter 16. We are still starting now. You won't believe that we're just establishing the biblical basis for studying this. But I believe someone is learning already. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. The Bible says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Uh -huh. The Bible says, and Peter, ha, now this deliverance issue is getting deeper. I understand healing, uh, delivering somebody who is afar off. But now Jesus is showing us something. This is among his fold. Peter, you too haven't been with Jesus. Jesus is talking about his death, his passion. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. 
Peter was rebuking Jesus. What was the rebuke? Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Should you not say amen to that statement? And Jesus looks at him and says, even though this sounds like compassion, Satan has taken advantage of your compassion. Satan does not only use weaknesses, he uses strengths too. He's using Peter's compassion here to advise Jesus, don't even think about dying. We are not ready to lose you. You would think that was a scriptural statement. But if Jesus heeded to that advice, we will all be in hell today. But he turned and said unto Peter, who did he speak to? Get thee behind me. Who? I hope you know that until this time, Peter had gone to preach and returned with results. Will you accept that kind of insult on your pedigree? You went to preach your ministerial teaching practice. You return with potent results. Please keep that scripture. And then Jesus looks at you from a compassionate heart and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. He says, For thou art an offense unto me. For thou serverest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Next verse. 24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. I'm sure Peter left confused. Satan, get thee behind me. What do you think the disciples will do to him? You think they will eat in the same place that day? We don't know where you have, you have been fishing at the river. Remember, River Rhine area. Only God knows what would have happened to you there. That Jesus is now rebuking you. <laughs> Can I tell you this? There is a lesson here in as much as we are laughing. The lesson is that sometimes it takes discernment more than the physical fashion of people to know that they need deliverance. They can be well behaved and calm. If you see someone misbehaving, it's easy to show that there is a spirit. But there are times even your compassion and the positive aspects of you, Satan can slip through it. And you will still be coordinated and not know. Peter did not know that something had happened to him. The same way someone can come and advise you and say, Look, the way this thing is, don't you think you should leave Nigeria? Just go. I'm not saying it's wrong, eh? Except if it's God that is telling you. Just leave Nigeria and go somewhere. You are having a job that is paying you 500000 and the person can even come and sincerely tell you, I had a dream. What is wrong with having a dream? And the person sincerely had a dream. Oh, you will be so blessed in this series. I will show you that many dreams that people are having that is leading to many problems in their lives were manipulations by demon spirits. Taking advantage of your sincerity. Yes, sir. There are many people who have no business starting ministry, but the devil masqueraded as an angel of light and showed them a dream that supposedly looked like ministry. They left everything they were doing and moved to another bishopric. They are suffering today thinking it's persecution and they do not know that they are veered off the plan of God. I pray that in this series, God will restore many people. There are people who have no business, no business going abroad except that sometimes a preacher did not even know he was not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And he spoke to them and said, do you know what? I, I want you to leave, leave this place, go to Lagos, or go to London, or go to this place. And in obedience and loyalty, believing it was the voice of God, they moved hoping to get into greener pastures, and some of them have met all kinds of things. I hope you know that we are not being judgmental. We are people of love. Is because we are teaching the subject of deliverance. That's why I ask you to pray that God will open your eyes. Peter, how could Satan so slip into Peter that he did not even know? One last scripture. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 7 and 8. Jesus was sending the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb... And he said, as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Jesus is giving them an instruction now. 
cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out. That means if it is true evangelism, you must meet devils somewhere. They will be waiting for you in men. They will be waiting to, for you in cities. Everywhere you see them, cast them out. Hallelujah. So we see this in the Old Testament. We see this in the New Testament. Now very quickly, let's examine the life of the apostles and the early church. For starters, Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. Very quickly now, Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. Philip went down to the city of Samaria, the Bible says, and preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7. What was a miracle? For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many that were what? Possessed with them. And many that were taken with palsies and were lame were healed. Verse 8. The Bible says, And there was great joy in that city. Scripture number 2. Acts chapter 16. We'll start from verse 16. The full text is to 21, but we'll just read 16 to 18. Remember the Bible says, It came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of what divination so you see that it is it is very very it is very very usual in the bible for spirits to be named based on how they behave spirit of divination there is the lying spirit there is a spirit of death are we together so here we have a lady possessed with a spirit and the bible names the spirit by its character is called the spirit of divination that she met us, which brought her masters much good by soothsaying, meaning she brought rewards. They were financial rewards. Verse 17. We can study this all night, dear people of God. There are so many things to learn from just this one verse. The Bible says the same followed Paul and us. Be careful who follows you. Just because people are following you does not mean they are of the same spirit. The Bible says this, spirit, this lady was having a spirit of divination and she brought profit. There is a relationship between divination and profit. So you be careful. Not every profit is profit. This is, the Bible never said the lady brought loss to them. Just because you are receiving rewards does not mean it is of God. You must be careful. The spirit of divination can also bring profits. Now watch this. The Bible says she followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which showed, us, showed unto us the way of salvation. Question, was she lying? Hmm. When the devil lies, you know. But what if the devil tells the truth? Because when the devil knows that you don't like lies, he will use truth on you. You've heard me say truth can kill. Truth is like a knife. It is not only a lie the devil uses to kill. He can use truth and kill. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. Why don't you like people who are publicizing what you are doing genuinely and sincerely? Which show us the way of salvation. Do you know the deception? This is the classic character of Satan. You know what Satan was achieving here? There were visitors in that city. So when Satan sees that he cannot fight you, he will seek partnership. And the way he will partner with you is by promoting what you represent. So that the day you are not in that city, when they can't find you, they will find who was with you. That's the strategy Satan was using here. They were only there for a few days and they would leave. But the girl was there to stay. And the strategy invented was don't fight them. Support them. Promote their evangelism. After a few days they will leave. So that if we cannot find Paul because he's far, we can find the diviner girl and her ministry continues. Watch this now. Please give us that scripture. The Bible says she did this many days. So it was not a mistake. She did this many days 
and the Bible says, and Paul being grieved, being grieved for supporting you, being grieved for promoting you, the Bible says, he turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Paul teaches us how to cast out devils. That you command them, not in your name. You command them in the name of Jesus to come out of her. The Bible says, and he came out the same hour. Now, I don't want you to read to 21 because you will see that there were consequences that followed. When that spirit left... Look at what happened. In fact, let's just read 19 and stop there. The Bible said, when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, what happened? They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers. Twisted a story so that we'll have them flogged. You know Paul and Silas, this is how they got to that prison. By casting out. That means it is not only how to cast out demons you must know. You must also know how to command deliverance for yourself. For the consequence of casting out demons. Because when you cast out demons, there can be consequences. Those spirits will start moving men. And systems and structures to come against you. But Paul and Silas said we were well trained. At midnight, Makato Skalikato said. It is not only casting out demons. We understand deliverance. We know how to let these chains leave us at midnight. Listen, I don't mean to scare you and we are not glorifying Satan. But this is why it is important for people to be mentored and trained. This our proud generation of arrogance just because someone falls down. People believe they have all it takes. They have the spiritual understanding. They go and tore into the enemy's camp. A shrine that was there before your grandfather was born. You just sweep everything and pack away your health. Pack away your sanity and throw it in the bush. And find out that by the next day, the only part of you that is moving is your right hand. Now, because it's true that you, may in, you intended to command deliverance. For the city but do you know the other dynamics they are called the weapons of victory the bible says before you tore the camp of the enemy make sure you have upon you something called the whole armor of god are we together sincerely not 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 to be sarcastic but i know in my time in ministry i have seen people even preachers who just took the risk to challenge native doctors, challenge herbalists, and the man was warning him. I won't listen. I came into this city. I am three months old. I am a child of God. Jesus died for me. You are right. But your revelation will soon show. Because there were other men who spoke like that and they went back untouched. T.L. Osborne would step into a city, scatter hell like that, and go back. Reinhard Bonke went everywhere from Congo to Nigeria to everywhere. Just help those under the anointing. Now, please look up. Uh, you've always heard me say, before you stand before Pharaoh, make sure you have seen the burning bush. Pharaoh is a wizard. He will ask you who sent you, but the people that do know their God. Not just the people who want to move. It is the people that do know their God. Can you pray in the Spirit in one minute? Your life is changing. You are gaining ascendance in the Spirit. Marvelous God. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. But I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. There are people who have gone to confront the gates of darkness. Please sit down. And they left with casualties untold. 
But there are others who went to the gates of darkness, dared them to their faces, scattered them until today they keep standing as if Satan does not exist. The difference is light. Are we together? Growing up, I would watch Reinhard Bonke laugh and get to regions where people dread to go to. Organize his crusade and ask people to bring all their instruments of divination. Have you watched it? Go and watch his videos. He does not just, I, in my opinion, no, I don't believe that man was just an evangelist. A man that preaches and a shrine can be born in somewhere. That's more than evangelism. Are we together? They would bring all the instruments, skulls, human body parts, age-long covenants, and he would set it on fire with joy and return back. Please help those under the anointing. Are we learning? God is changing us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen very carefully. Jesus sent us and it was clear that he sent us because of the results that we are bringing. But if you have not stayed to understand your being sent and to understand the dynamics, we're discussing Acts 16. You can leave and cast out demons and the demons can come out and you will be happy, but you will be surprised to find out that casualties begin to happen. That means before you ever sustain the courage to launch an attack, make sure you are grounded as far as your spiritual fortification is concerned. Do you know what it means to hold a miracle service like this? Cast out devils, dare these spirits, and then go back home and sleep. I lay me down and I wait for the Lord sustain me. I travel all the time. I go from meetings to meetings, nations to nations. And there are all kinds of ways the devil can easily attempt accidents, whatever, whatever it is. Except for the fact that light can fortify you like chariots standing before a man. Can I tell you? Believe me, you cannot pretend authority. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, 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 your lifting has come. Oh, 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 your lifting has come. Your freedom has come. Oh, 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 your freedom has come. Please sit down. One more scripture that gives us the basis to study about Satan, demons, and their operations. Two more, really. First Peter chapter 5, very quickly, and verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. May I request that we read it together? Ready? Please read. One to read. Be sober, the Bible says. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom... That means there is an operation of Satan that is in the similitude of a roaring lion. A roaring lion is a hungry lion. Meaning it is looking for food. I watch a bit of National Geographic, Nacho Wild, and sometimes I want to watch these animals and the lion can be patient with hunger and just allows maybe a herd passing or some antelopes or whatever it is and with precision and determination. When it looks at one, it does not see the rest again. It will pursue that one with an energy. Watch this. When the lion grabs it, there are two assignments of the lion to kill. The first is to bring it down. Because once that animal is not down, the first assignment, no matter how large, sometimes it will be a coordinated, it will be a coordinated attempt. The entire pride will come in. And they will bring, especially if it's a big animal like an elephant, it will bring it down. Assignment number two, they will go to the throat immediately and hold it and stay for as long as they will stay 
when it dies, they can now settle down. There's no reason to rush. It's already dead. So the Bible says, Satan, as a roaring lion, meaning when he comes around you, he's not joking. He's not playing games. He's not a prey fool. He means everything he wants to do. And he says, you walk it about seeking, seeking, seeking whom he may devour. But I've also watched times when the lion made costly mistakes that he died for. For instance, elephants or something, and then it just comes and tries to play games, and the elephant will lift it like that, lift it like he's playing a football. Revelations 12. We'll start from verse 7. It's getting interesting now. Revelations 12. And there was war in heaven. Let it not surprise you when there are conflicts around your life. Even in heaven, there was a time the peace was disturbed. Are we together? If there was war in heaven, it's not unusual to have war in your family. It's not unusual to have war in your finances. Even in heaven, there was once war. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels, verse 8, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old, take note of that word old, he's not just a serpent, he's an old serpent, meaning he has the advantage of age. That old serpent who is called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. The Bible says he was cast into the... We are going to discuss some things now. And his angels were cast out with him. Are we there? Just leave us nine. The Bible says the great dragon who is called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast down to... Where was he cast down to? Hmm. Think already. That means before Satan fell, earth was already there. It's not that he was cast down and was moving in space. There was already earth and he was cast down there. And there was a lamentation when you read, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 10. Let's just finish it up. And I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Go back to verse 9. I want to build something. The Bible says that the great dragon, which was Satan, was cast down to the earth. Are you there? Now go to verse 10. There's something I want you to see. The Bible says, Now salvation is come, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of who? Brethren. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. When you understand this, because the next phase we are going to now is the origin of Satan. At least we'll touch on it a bit before we pray. And there are many things you have heard and known about Satan that I'm going to tell you. Some of them may trouble you now. Just take note of this scripture. We're coming back there. Are you ready? Praise the name of the Lord. So now we, have, we can agree safely from our study of the Old Testament, the life and the ministry of Jesus, the early church and the life of the apostles, we know that it is not a biblical error to study Satan, to study demons, and to study the operation of the satanic kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Very important. Now, very quickly, to conserve our time, let's study the origin of Satan. Let me just speak a bit about it. Please pray in the Spirit and ask the Lord to grant you understanding.
who is Satan and where did he come from? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just give us one more scripture to support what we just discussed. Second, it just came to my spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Very classic scripture. We'll be making reference. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We'll read 11 and 12. Lest Satan, he says, Furthermore, when I come to... Okay, no, no. Please go back to 11. I think maybe 10, 11, one of them. But lest Satan... This is really the part. Lest Satan should get an advantage. That means ignorance gives Satan an advantage. When we get to access points, you'll be learning that one of the access points that gives Satan an advantage over the believers is what? Ignorance. Not just ignorance of what you want ignorance of his devices you can have knowledge of what you want and yet have ignorance of his devices and he will still have an advantage of you are we blessed right so the origin of satan and demons i don't know if we'll be able to do demons but wherever we stop we'll pray because i want us to do a bit of prayer tonight as god grants us grace Our study is going to be from a biblical perspective. Biblical perspective. Why is that so? Every religion of the over 4,000 plus religions that we have registered on earth, every one of them believes, acknowledges, serves, or talks about Satan in some way. Every religion that we know. Are we together now? Yes. Maybe except for a few that try purely on human consciousness and do not believe in the existence of spirits or any other thing but most religions would acknowledge the presence of an adversary called satan he is called several names now from abraham let me give us a bit of bible history from abraham there are three major religions that came out from abraham and usually in study of all of these things from a classically now, we usually would use those three religions for reference. That means from a classical study now. Number one is Judaism. Number two is Islam. Number three is Christianity. These are the three faith practices that directly came out of Abraham. Judaism, Islam through Ishmael, and then the faith practice. Are we learning now? And all three agree in the existence of an adversary they call him different names but then we know for sure that satan is an adversary that we agree across religions may disagree across several things but satan has never in most religions never been purported to be a friend are we together now so um you will when you read about satan it's important that you state your reference there, there, there are differences between the way Satan is looked at in, say, Islam or in Judaism even. And then in other faith practices, you know, Buddhism and all of these other faith practices. They have several angles. So my discourse is with reference to scripture. Are we together now? Because you will go online and you will find all kinds of extra biblical references that attempt to bring the history of Satan from several planes some from the intergalactic realm some from transcendental masters some from a scientific standpoint some from whatever it is i'm not here to debate on all of that we believe in jesus and our reference for discussion and growth is scripture is that clear all right now so um there are three major scriptures that theologians have used in an attempt to x-ray the origin of Satan. Very strangely, the book of the beginnings, Genesis, is largely silent about the beginning of Satan. 
which has confused theologians for a long time because you would expect that the book of the beginnings should capture everything to put context to our work but the book of the beginnings does not seem to state so much about satan's origin it just started straight with his character and his operation and so we need to explore a few other scriptures to find reference are we together but the bible very clearly at least let's use jesus because one of the ways that we learn the ways of god is jesus jesus himself called satan a thief in john chapter 10 and verse 10. there are many names that satan is called in scripture i will list a few of them then we'll go to his original name and begin from there praise the name of the lord in john chapter 10 and verse 10 jesus himself calls satan the thief very definite article the thief that he cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy and jesus says i am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly so satan is called devil we see one of his names devil and i told you that devil is yes is used to identify that singular individual who heads the demonic kingdom but more than that the word devil is a generic description it comes from the greek word diabolos diabolos where you get the word diabolism the greek word diabolos and it means the accuser or the slanderer so the devil is from the word diabolos from the greek the accuser or the slanderer and then we have satan or satan now right it means to oppose one who opposes or one who acts as an adversary we have satan being called the thief we have satan being called the enemy in the parable of the wheat and the tears the bible says when jesus saw it he said the enemy had done this we see satan called the evil one we see satan called in ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 for instance the prince of the power of the air the prince of the power of the air he is also called the spirit that walks in the children of disobedience these are several names satan himself is called the adversary the adversary but the original name of satan as revealed in scripture is lucifer the word lucifer from the hebrew tongue when it is translated it means the shining one or the light bearer now i want to tell you a little story and i pray that you will understand and be blessed by it in the name of jesus there are three scriptures classically that we use in scripture in discussing the origin of satan um the first of them as we see is revelation chapter 12 from verse 7 where we read the bible lets us know that there was war in heaven and michael and his angels fought against the dragon another name satan is called and that the dragon fought and his angels so we see that satan at that time already had an organized system of angels too hallelujah praise the lord right so verse 8 and prevailed not neither was there a place found for them anymore that means before that time where were they living they had access to heaven together with the angels are we together now anymore means they once had that access right so let's go to isaiah 14 isaiah 14 now to understand we're going to isaiah 14 and then ezekiel 28 you will have to understand something in theology called prophetic parallels please look up prophetic parallels means that you can use a story to adumbrate you can use a prophetic description to adumbrate something that has happened in time past or something that will happen in the future for instance if i look at you and i say let's say you have a son and his father used to steal and i say young man keep behaving foolishly that is how that man stole and he was thrown away you understand what i'm saying now i'm using the story connected to this man but the warning is to the young man but that there is a story that i'm drawing from are you getting the point now you 
I need to give you this background so that you will understand what we are about to read. Because the story we are about to read was written to real kings. But based on the law of prophetic parallels, it was also, um, the prophet was using an ancient story to relate and bring a warning to the then kings. Are you clear on that now? So let's go to Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12. Isaiah 14 from verse 12. This was a description of the fall of Lucifer. Are you ready? Please look up. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of of the morning that's the meaning of his name the light bearer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations we are reading to verse 17 very quickly verse 2 or next verse for thou hast said in your heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Take note. I will be like the most high. 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit. Two more verses. 16 now. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? 17. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that openeth not the house of his prisoners. Take note of this because I will be showing you a name and a story that Jesus gave about Satan that we do not find in scripture. The name is a murderer. He says you are of the, your father the devil, for from the beginning he was a murderer. We never see him killing Adam, at least the first contact. That means there was an old story that even predates Adam. Because Jesus called Satan. He said among the many accusations against Satan is that he was a murderer. Ezekiel 28. Verse 11, second scripture. This is another prophetic parallel. It was to the king of Tyre. But then, there is a parallel. You will see some things there that could not have happened to an earthly king. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros. So the lamentation was a warning to the king. But he's about to draw a prophetic reference to warn the king. Saying, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom. This was the description of Lucifer before the fall. You are full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden. Are you seeing that earth was created already before the fall of Lucifer? You have to understand this. Very, very strange. When Lucifer was casted down, the Bible says he was casted down to earth. Is that true? Scientists carbon date rocks and they tell us that the earth is millions and millions of years old. They are not lying. The oldest man on earth from Adam as we know is barely a little above 6,000 years. Is that true? But archaeologists and historians have discovered castles. They have discovered... Um, um, semblances of civilizations that are more than 6,000 years ago. That means that there is an old story. An old story that predates Adam. Let's finish up. It says every precious stone was the covering. Please just, just be graphic about this. Use your mind and look at how Satan was. That precious stones were his covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond, the burial, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy timbrets and of thy pipes were prepared in the day that thou was created. That means Satan was created. Hello? Satan was? 
you will be learning from this that the arch enemy of Satan is not God. The arch enemy of Satan is man. Are we together? Satan is a created being. Let me quickly give you two scriptures to support that so that there's no confusion. Satan is a created being. In fact, three scriptures. One is John 1 verse 3. The Bible says, And for without him all things were made by him. How many things? That if you ever see anything that appeared, it was made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Scripture number 2, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Colossians 1 and 16. It says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven. Was Satan once in heaven? And that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him. And for him. Are we together? And then of course the last scripture is Ezekiel 28 and verse 15. Let's continue our reading now. I just needed to put that in perspective. Thou was perfect in thy ways. In the day that thou was created. Until iniquity was found in thee. We are reading to 19. By the multitudes of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of the Lord. Remember Psalm 24, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. So we now see that Satan was a cherub that covered in the midst of the stones of fire. There's no mention of the king of Tyre being in the midst of the stones of fire. He would not even survive it. 17. Okay. He said, thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Aha. Uh -huh. The Bible is now putting perspective. We need to examine why Satan would rebel from a place like heaven. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted, and he said, Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Take note of the things that can corrupt people. Beauty, wisdom. He said, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. 18. Halash kanabata. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Last verse. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. Prophetic parallels. Are you seeing now? Because the king that this judgment was upon later died. But Satan is still existing. So that's why I told you, you see prophetic parallels. There are things that could not have been the king. And there are things that could not have been Satan. Are you learning? So we know that Satan was a created being. According to scripture, that he was Lucifer. One of the cherubs in heaven. That was made according to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. By God and for his glory. But then the Bible tells us that something happened. Revelation 12 tells us there was war in heaven. Please look up. What did Satan really want? That is really what I want to help us and then we'll pray. At least it is enough for us to know that he was created by God. No matter what he is and no matter how long he existed, we know that he is God's creation. But what made Satan... Listen carefully. What made Satan to rebel against God? And what makes Satan to still hate men today? We need to examine this. What is he looking for? To answer this question, in truth, if I'm to do justice to this question, there are two schools of thought, and all of them are worth considering. I will give it to you, and then we'll discuss. Number one, the first school of thought is believed 
that Satan from Ezekiel 28, that Satan wanted to run a parallel government. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. There was an obsession by reason of his beauty. The Bible says his beauty and his excellence and his wisdom flattered him. That is also proven through his manipulation over earthly kings. We see Nebuchadnezzar also. That these kings can be carried away by their beauty and their splendor. And they will want to be God. And we see that the same kind of judgment that was meted on Satan was meted on Nebuchadnezzar. From a cherub he was thrown down to become nothing. Nebuchadnezzar from a, an exalted king he was thrown down to become an animal. Are we together now? You can see those parallels. So the first school of thought agrees that Satan fell because of that desire. I don't believe Satan wanted to overthrow God. He is it's clear that he can't do that. But I, I know that Satan wanted to run a parallel government so that you can choose the option of God or him. It is still the character of Satan till today. Every time Satan studies what God is doing, he tries to create an alternative system to it. Are we together now? Now, the second school of thought, which is equally worth considering, is the timing of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 gives us a very serious picture. It says that Satan was cast to the earth. And that means that, means that the earth was already there. And if the earth is already there, then it also goes to tell us. Um, now, look up, please. <laughs> Where do you think Satan got the idea that he can be like God? Because that idea must have come from somewhere. All things consist in God. That means you don't have any wisdom outsourced from outside of God. So where, would it, where, where do you think Satan would have gotten the idea that it is possible for man to be like God? Now, the second school of thought argue that Satan fell after man was created. Personally, I don't agree with that, but I'm going to teach you what I believe. Are we together? Just to honor those schools of thought. It is believed... That when God made man and Satan saw the potential, that man had now become in the image of God. No creature was ever made in the image of God. They were made in the likeness of God. That jealousy, are you seeing that? That desire to be jealous. And you see, you can see that character consistent with the operation of Satan too. That every time something new comes that surpasses the old, the old fights it. You see Jacob and Esau. You see Ishmael. You see Abraham. Is that true? You see all of these parallels that Satan saw that man was created now in the image and the likeness of God. Now, I do not believe that for many reasons. Um, number one, because according to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, that is the scripture that I use for my basis to argue away that. The Bible says, and God saw that everything that he had made was good. So it would not be possible for God to call everything good when Satan... Are, are you getting the idea now? Yes. Everything he had made was good and the evening and the morning came look up please i hope you realize that in the making of man genesis chapter one and genesis chapter two oh dear i wish we have the time there are there are two different contexts of discussions apart now i don't want to confuse you because many people just read their bible from one and two you will see that in the making of man it was creation in Genesis chapter 2, it is the formation of man. When God blessed man in Genesis chapter 2, it was Adam, man, like the spirit of man. The woman was in the man when he gave the dominion mandate. That is why today in manifesting dominion, there is no gender. The moment you are in Christ, you can manifest that dominion. Because the woman came out of man in chapter 2, when that formation happened. 
It was simply based on the structure of family and God's organogram that the woman comes under the man. But as far as dominion over systems from a spiritual angle, the woman has the same ranking. There is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is one new man in Christ. Jesus came to restore that. Are we together? So, the school of thought that says that um, Satan... Satan did not fall. Um, he fell after man. If you believe that, that Satan fell after man simply because he peeped into the making of man in the image of God and then jealousy came, there are many other scriptures that don't agree with that. Are we together? Number one, Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2. Theologically speaking, we call it the gap theory. And we know that the judgment in Genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. No other being was judged to have produced that kind of chaos. Every judgment that is recorded in scripture as we see had Lucifer behind it. From Genesis 1 verse 1, then Noah, to every other judgment that has happened to the final judgment that will condemn all men who have refused Jesus Christ. Satan has always been behind it. But this is what I believe based on scripture. Listen very carefully. Let me establish my thoughts on this now. Romans chapter 8 from verse 29. What does Satan really want? For whom he did foreknow, he, did, he also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Please look up. I believe, and this is based on this scripture. The Bible tells us the entire agenda of man was not one that was being executed real time. It was predestined. There was a foreknowledge. And do not forget the office of Satan. Satan was the light bearer, the custodian of the wisdom and the mysteries of God. To be predestined and foreordained means there was a time that God designed that, that he was going to create a being in his image and in his likeness. And Satan must have had access to that information based on his office. This is what gave him an idea that so God can actually create another species in his image and his likeness. And so that began to challenge him to want to work with that prison. I will be like the Mosai if that is the case. Are we together now? Yes. Based on scripture, if it is true, that man was predestined. The whole agenda. It was never something that was just executed. God scratched his head. The Bible says this thing was organized. Watch this. We have a government structure in Nigeria and in many parts of Africa. And there are times where when the government wants to do certain things, there is a group of intel, the DSS, and the intelligence unit. Is that true? By reason of their office, no matter how private and personal what it is the president wants to do or what it is that the executive cabinet wants to do, by the reason of their office, they have to be initiated into this nitty gritty. Am I right on that? This is government. Now, if there is a traitor among them, he can take advantage of that access of his office. We have seen it happen across governments. Is that true? This is what I believe happened. That there has been a discussion. Let us make man, listen carefully. I do not believe let us make man was an idea that just came after he made the trees and the rest. No, no. The Bible is just telling you that there was in God's mind this idea. It's not just that it was in, in verse 26 that the idea just came. No. Let us make man was the motivation behind the recreation of the earth again. Because the earth was recreated for the sake of man. Are, are we learning now? 
So because of Satan's office as the light bearer, the cherub that covereth, he's had access to some of these things. And the Bible says, with that, he began to nurse that idea in his heart. You see the same attitude scattered all through scripture that a man's enemies will have to be members of his own household. The one that was used to throw Jesus down. Because you see, you can study Satan by the consistency of his patterns. It was Judas that gave Jesus away. Because of Jesus had moments when he would talk with them and tell them about establishing an earthly kingdom and about all of these things. And it was on the strength of that information. Judas could liaise with other people to say, you know what, let's kill this man. He's going to overthrow you. They believed he was talking about a physical government. So when they finished their meeting, Judas was looking at a way of making money from it. The same character of the Antichrist. Don't forget the Bible says Satan entered Judas. If he entered G Judas, Judas will be a continuation of his original desire. The light bearer, having the idea that the plan of man, not necessarily redemption, the plan of man, now to be created in the image and the likeness of God, that gave him an opportunity and that idea because of access you see the reason why God judged him? And you see the reason why Satan cannot be forgiven? Because of the kind of access that he had. He was the, his very name, Lucifer, meant the light bearer. He was the custodian of the wisdom of God. Are we together? Watch this. The Holy Spirit can minister to me today by reason of my oneness with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can speak to me. Look up, please. And he can tell me that this man is going to be a billionaire next week. Now I have that information. What I do with that information is now up to me. I can use that information to manipulate this man now. Do we agree on that? Now, my corruption, you see that, it will earn me a punishment because I have now betrayed the trust that he gave me. But I am now privy. Before it happens to this man, I can announce it and tell him, Sir, in two weeks, you are going to be a billionaire. And truly it will happen like that because I have been granted access. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? Yes. Before it will happen in the earth, it happens in the heavens. Is that true? This is what convinces me that Lucifer had access to parts of the plan of God for man and when he found out that the image of God is going to be invested to another creature that is not him nor any being in heaven listen you need to know why Satan hates you I'm tracing a story for you the greatest desire of Satan did not come to him let me prove it to you again by prophetic adumbration look at Haman and Mordecai when the king said, who shall we honor? You see the same manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. Because a man had access to the king. He knew that the king wanted to lift somebody. And he said to himself, who else? You see the parallel of this character across systems. Who else will the king honor? And he gave a very elaborate strategy for honor. And he said, sorry, you are not the one. Go and do the rest. Do it for ordinary Mordecai. Who is staying at the city gate. And carry, you are the one who will push the donkey and say, bow the knee. That was an insult to Mordecai. And Mordecai went and reported to his wife. And the wife said, sorry, who is this man you are trying to fight? He said, he's a Jew. He said, you are finished. That means there is a covenant that has given this man an advantage. Are you learning scripture now? Yes. Everywhere you see the spirit of the Antichrist, there, you see that there is always betrayal and you see that there is always treason. Satan being the light bearer granted him access to certain secrets of the Lord. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God can trust men with secrets. He can trust men 
with truth. Are you learning? Satan's arch enemy, listen carefully, is not God. God is his creator. And even in his fallen state, he will acknowledge God. Satan's arch enemy is man. Now, let me wrap up as we pray. What does Satan really want? What has been his drive for all these probably millions of years and he's not rested? Why does Satan want your family? Listen carefully. Why does Satan want your health? Why is he afflicting you with sickness? Why does Satan want to destroy the ministry, the man of God? Why is he destroying your business? It's an old story. And if you do not know what is Satan's motivation, you will be shadow boxing around issues, not knowing that the issues predate you. There are two things that Satan is looking for. And this is the basis for the entire study of demonology and deliverance. Two things. Number one, dominion. Number two, transgenerational allegiance. This is all Satan is looking for. His obsession for dominion. And number two, his obsession for transgenerational allegiance. This is what birthed the concept of witchcraft, altars, patterns, everything you see today that destroys people, destroys family, is a structure driving that goal. Dominion and allegiance. Two scriptures and we'll begin to pray. Matthew chapter 4. Satan's obsession for dominion and Satan's obsession for allegiance was demonstrated in the very temptation of Satan with Jesus. Please look up. Are we Bible students? Then was Jesus led up out of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of who? The devil. Now, um, let's go to verse 8. Verse 8, quickly please. Verse 8. Again, this was the third temptation. The devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain. What did the devil show him? The, all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Say dominion. Scripture is revealing to us now Satan's obsession. He said, all these things I will give thee. Please go back to verse, yes, and the glories of them. Now verse 9. All these things I will give you if you will do what? And dominion and allegiance. That's it. Satan can suddenly become a giver if you satisfy that condition. That means I don't need this. Keep that scripture, please. Verse 9. I don't need the money. Look up, please, believers. I don't need your health. I don't need your political position. I don't need your prosperity. I don't need your ministry. I don't need longevity in your family. It's none of my business. There is one thing I need. I need you to fall down and worship. Nebuchadnezzar, when you hear the sound of the trumpet and everything, fall down and worship. The image of the beast fall down and worship. How could a man be so driven by this agenda? Can I tell you this? You can easily know who is under the influence of Satan by their obsession for these two things. Their obsession for control, not just dominion, control, and their obsession for human worship is a classic character of Satan. This is all that Satan looks for. Please listen to me. And do you know what? Satan hates you today because of one thing God gave you. That image and he declared that dominion mandate and compelled creation to answer you. Now you have become the arch enemy of Satan. Look up please. If Satan, if God suddenly removes his image from man, and give it to stones. You will beg Satan. You will not get his attention. He will not need you again. Because it's not you he's looking for. What is man that thou art mindful of? Psalm 8. Let's wrap up. Psalm 8 verse 1. O Lord our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. 
Who has said thy glory? Help those under the anointing. We're about to pray. I sense a very strong anointing here. Verse 2. It says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Now, his contemplations. Verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Verse 4. What is man? What is the psalmist had to sit down and wonder, Lord, what is man that you did not? Couldn't you have just used Satan? Couldn't you have just used the archangels? You left all of them and you came to bring another humanoid species. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Verse 5. For you have made him a little lower than angels. The word there is Elohim, not Angelio. Elohim. You have made him a little lower than yourself in ranking. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Verse 6. Thou hast made him to have over what? The works of thy hands. And you have put all things. All things. Hold on. He didn't say all things on earth. No. All things. All things. Aside from yourself. It was adumbrated in the honor of Joseph. He said, Joseph, I now promote you. In everything will be under you. It is only on the throne you will be above me. This is what was given to him. That was what the devil was fighting. So that journey from his brothers to Potiphar's wife to everything was fighting that position. It's the same thing that happened to Esther. The same thing that happened to Mordecai. These are all adumbrations of what God did to man. Thou hast made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Verse 7. Okay, so... You, you, let's just leave verse 6. When you go back and see what Paul speaks to the Hebrew churches, he says, in doing so, you did not leave anything that was under his feet. You find that in Hebrews chapter 2. That you did not leave anything out that was not under his feet. Can I tell you this? Please look up. Man, not God, is Satan's arch enemy. Believing that God is Satan's arch enemy is an insult. No. Because even when they were fighting for the body of Moses, you see that now. You see how powerful this ranking is. Because as at the time Satan was fighting with Michael over the body of Moses, Satan was fighting as the prince of this world. He had collected that authority and Michael had to respect him. So he could not say, I rebuke you. He said, the Lord, the authority that is higher than man, the only authority higher than man, I use that authority to rebuke you. Because if Satan had told, if, if Michael had told Satan, I rebuke you, it would be a compromise of the order. When God exalted man, he was exalted even above the cherubs. Above every other thing. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. Where are you seated? Far above. Thrones. Dominions. Every name that is named. Listen. Please hear me. You have to understand and believe what I'm teaching you. It's not about the all time your village. Your grandfather was an innocent man who did he just entered the middle of an old story. So Satan created systems to make sure there is transgenerational allegiance. They will stop rain and punish men who do not know, neither will they understand. So they will go to Satan and say, let rain come and let our children eat. Say, here is the agreement. I will send the rain. Remember, he's a giver. Suddenly, if he will get dominion, an allegiance so the fathers on behalf of the land who say satan hunger is killing us through those mediums we will serve you they call him different names but he's the same person okay we will give you a deity worship this deity and the fathers came 
grandfathers will worship the deity and for as long as they worship the deity he will use the authority of man to bring rain the authority of man is what satan uses to bring rain listen carefully when people are sick when he finds out that people are not that allegiance is compromising there will be a widespread problem within the land and the elders will run back and the the priest or whatever medium can say, I'm hungry. You who are eating, I've not eaten. What do you want, sir? Make sure your children come and worship me. And you innocently, they give back to you. You are shouting before you even know left and right. They made incisions on your body and made covenants. And Satan says, that's right. And then now, you just stand before Jesus and say, I receive you as my Lord. And Satan says, what did you say? Do you know what that means? That means you are saying from me, oh, everything that comes from me will no longer serve you. And Satan says you have drawn the line. Everything that is a threat to his allegiance, he will fight it through men. He will fight it through systems. Can I tell you this? Every, please look up. Do you believe what I've taught you so far? Whether you are Yoruba, whether you are Igbo, whether you are South South, whether you are the Caribbeans, you are Northern, you are Spanish, I don't care what region. This story has brought all of us into one singular basket. This is what Satan wants. He showed us what he wants and dead Jesus. Don't think he'll be afraid of you. He said, Jesus, there is no need to go through all this rigor. Just bow. Let me tell you, something happens to Satan when you worship. Are you seeing what happens when you worship? Are you seeing why worship is powerful? So he looks at you going down to your knees and says, for who now? And you begin to call his name. Jesus. And he will say, you know what? Afflict this man in a way that will make Jesus not look like Savior. And when the affliction gets too much, somebody will tell you there's somebody in the village. And you will go and sit down and say, I knew he was going to come. Hear me? I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you. Because truly, your freedom has come. Can I tell you this? This is why songs that talk about surrender are so powerful. Because in doing that, it is like it's, it's, it's a new salt. Satan says for millions of years. Can I tell you this? Do you know Satan actually believes that the day is going to come when he will compel the entire creation to come under his lordship? He really does. It is only you who does not believe it. Satan is firing on all four cylinders. He still believes. He believes that all your family will serve him. Forget that you are... So when he sees you, listen, every battle that you read in this Bible came as a result of Satan's perceiving it as a threat to his agenda. When he killed children, it was not about children. He perceived there were saviors in the children. When Satan causes barrenness today, Satan does not need children. Satan, he, he can peep through the window of prophecy and hear when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and say, Madam, a prophet is going to come through your womb. And he knows that that prophet will break a 150 year old idol practice. He will bring the barrenness of Zechariah and Elizabeth was not about barrenness it was about john who will ordain jesus who will save the world please look at me god is giving us intelligence apostle i am a sincere person i don't steal i don't kill yet there is an attack on my business let me tell you interpret it now from the lens of who satan is Interpret everything that happens in your life from the lens of who Satan is. 
not the lens of the village you are coming from that's too small not the lens of the mean it's not about you and your boss from a bigger picture your boss has no business with that he's only an available vessel everything satan will use to frustrate you until he brings you to a point of dominion and transgenerational allegiance I know this. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Satan can give you the whole world, but he needs something. Your soul. I'm not wasting your time. I apologize. I know our time is gone. We're going to pray. But please hear me. Now you can go back home and know that it's not about the problem that happened in your family. It's not about what happened with your grandfather at all. It's not even about what is happening between your father and your mother. It's not about what is happening with your education. Satan does not need visas. No. It's not about your finances. He has seen that your finances will do something that will threaten that agenda. He will attach it with everything he has. Please look up. My dear one, it is not about marriage and children. It is because he has seen that in it. Satan does not attack anything for itself. He verifies. Is there a component in your lifting? Oh, so you now become governor. Or you become head of parliament. And in it, many people will receive scholarships to go to good schools. And there is a chapel there. They will hear a man of God. They will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will not win that election. He will fight you. What does Satan want? I will be like the Most High. I desire it. Everywhere you see Satan, he's obsessed with his image being erected and men bowing to the image. He does not want animals. When he came upon Nebuchadnezzar, he said, let a 90 feet stature be built. Ah! But only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are thrones, there are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are roads, but only a Shua will reign forever. To His kingdom there'll be no end. There are thrones, there are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are. Be vigilant for your adversary the devil like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour he said do not let Satan take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant that there is an agenda when that agenda was in place your village was not even your village your nation was not even your nation there is an old story about an old serpent, an old agenda. Not only a shoe will reign forever. To your kingdom there'll be no end. Only a shoe will reign forever. Listen, please don't miss any of this series. This is just an introduction. I will be sharing with you in the course of this series some of my encounters with the dark world. 
and you will marvel and wonder where genuine spiritual authority comes from. Can I tell you, this teaching you see and this series is one of the greatest threat of Satan. Because the power of darkness is the absence of light. When light comes, now you are gaining perspective. You can go back and say, Mama, this our fight is not about two of us. Now I know. This fight is not about you at all. This ten-year-old fight is not about you. I have found out in the volume of the books that there is something about my destiny. Man of God, hear me. Find comfort. Why is Satan attacking my ministry? I will tell you why. It is not because of where you come from. Where you come from is just the obvious answer, not the right one. I can tell you. Some of you now begin to look at your life and see all the happenings and see that that roaring lion has been tracing you and saying till now you have not gone down. Can I tell you this? Do not cry about all the stories of pain in your life. Now God is interpreting the writings on the wall. The disappointment, the shame. He fought your marriage. He fought your children. You lost your child. You lost everything. And you are wondering, to what end is this? Now I bring you the word of the Lord. He wants dominion and he wants transgenerational allegiance. If you will fall down and worship me, that business I will give it to you. Can I tell you this? Look up please. Look up please. Unfortunately, painfully unfortunately, there are people today who could not stand because they do not know these truths and they do not have the weapons of victory. They said, Satan, I can't go through this. I will go back to you. And they had that agreement. They are some of the celebrities we celebrate around the world today. They know what they did. You don't know it, but they know. That is why in spite of their fame, there is no joy. They already know their doom is defined. That's why the money does not prosper them. That's why in the, you see how miserable, respectfully speaking, some of their lives become. In the midst of all the glamour. Because they know that there is a covenant. Please hear me. Some of you right now, Satan is about to tempt you. And he's using financial issues. He's using marital issues. He's using health issues. And they have called you from the village. Come back. Remember what we said. We will bath you near the river. And that's it. Just bath him. No. It's not about the water. A river does not hurt people. There is an allegiance. Please hear me. Let me encourage someone as we pray. For the sake of those depending on you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Some of you are crying. Listen to me. I'm very serious. For the sake of your family members. If you give up, who else will help them? Are you not seeing their state? That's why God sent you to Koinonia here. For those of you following. That's why he said. A read out of fire. Only a shoe, you reign forever to your kingdom. There'll be no end. Only a shoe, will reign forever. Please look at me. What if rain had bonke gave up? What if T.L. Osborne gave up? What if Billy Graham gave up? Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Can I tell you this? Please look at me brothers and sisters. This is a word from the Lord. This is not just a deliverance series. You need to go back home and listen to this thing again. Especially this part. What is Satan really looking for? You are wrong! If you think it's your marriage, you are wrong 
if you think it's your health, what is it about the cancer and the fibroid and whatever the genotype issue? No. None of those things. There is something he's looking for. Please look up. We are wrapping up. Please look up. In our nation here and many parts of Africa, when kidnappers or some of these evil people are looking for people, what they do is they try to look for somebody or something dear to you. Is that true? They catch your child or they catch whoever. And then sometimes they will now make you to hear the voice of your child. And when your child that you gave birth to says, Daddy, please don't leave me like this. You can give up that business and say, what is business if my child is in the hand of someone? And all of a sudden, you bring your everything. So what Satan did was he studied everything dear to you. He found out your assignment is dear to you. Your family is dear to you. Your business is dear to you. And he fashioned an attack. Hear me? Now that it seems like he's collected the business, he's strangling the business like the voice of that child and making you hear it. Daddy, will you leave this vision like this? Daddy, is this how this family will be without a child? And before you know it, they say there is somebody. It's not exactly evil, but we'll go to the village. He said we should bring a chicken, we should bring one granite oil, we should bring palm oil, we should bring a knife, and bring some kinds of things. Some of you, God brought this message to help you because you're on your way going there now. Be careful. Can I tell you this? Desperation is Satan's moment. The moment Satan finds a desperate individual, here he comes. I spoke to you 10 years ago. You didn't listen. 10 years later, are you willing? But only a shoe will reign forever to your kingdom two prayer points prayer point number one please pray it from the depth of your heart shout this loud after me everybody say father one more time say father in the name of jesus i come by the blood of the lamb and I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me, fashioned against my destiny, shall prosper. Lift your voice and begin to pray. No weapon. No weapon against my health. No weapon against the work of the Lord committed to me. No weapon. Someone pray. No weapon against my children. No weapon. Are you praying? Against my job, my career, my spiritual life. Every spirit around your life is on assignment. The spirit of death is on assignment. The spirit of infirmity is on assignment. The spirit of failure is on assignment. They don't come on their own. They are sent by an adversary. Hallelujah. Please look up. I know we've not begun to discuss deliverance proper. But let me use one scripture and we pray. Now thanks be to God. Which always causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God. Can I tell you this? Believe me when I tell you that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amplified says is really and unquestionably free. Free from curses. Free from yokes. 
bondages of darkness. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, I dissociate myself from ancestry. I dissociate myself from covenants. I dissociate myself from activities of bloodline and inheritance. I declare that I have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every nation. I am seated with Christ. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist him. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Pray. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor and glory. Victory in Jesus Christ. Victory by the blood. Victory over curses. Victory over altars. Victory over yokes. Victory over activities of ancestry. Victory. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of Jesse, is worthy. And I looked upon the throne and I saw as it were a lamb that had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God. My background does not have to be a disadvantage over me. Because my grandfather was a herbalist, my grandmother was a herbalist, I don't have to suffer the consequences of yesterday. There is a bailout system for me. Because upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Give him a big hand clap of victory. The lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and riches forever and ever. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Now please listen very carefully. Please listen very carefully. This is a deliverance series and I'll be giving us a lot of assignments. Please trust God for grace and discipline yourself to do it. Hallelujah. I may not compel us and give us a lot of things, but let me just choose a day of the week. Let's say Thursday. Discipline yourself to fast at least. We'll be doing it, even if it's just once a week. The weakest person here can fast at least one day. Thursday, you are praying. Let me encourage you. This is something you should do, please beginning from now till all through from your 11 o'clock till 6 o'clock choose any one hour and blast in tongues praying in the night 
please discipline yourself. You will not die. Mean business with your destiny once and for all, for God's sake. Are we together? If by now you don't see the importance of this spiritual exercise, then I take it that you are not really... Some of you, in these moments of prayer, you will be surprised the things God will open your eyes to see. You can play any koinonia message you want. Some of you can choose 12 to 1, 11 to 12, depending on your schedule. Maybe even earlier. Just discipline yourself to take any one hour. Flog it out with destiny. You can add your worship. You can dance like our dear sister did. Please just obey instructions and see what will happen to you. I assure you, you will share testimonies here that you will marvel and wonder. And let me encourage you, don't keep quiet. There will be enough time for testimonies as God is helping. Don't be silent. Whenever you come for Koinonia, don't wait until it is announced. Right at the, you can go to the media stand or the PR desk and tell them, I have a testimony. It's burning within my spirit. I'm not teaching you things that are, are lectures. This man standing before you was a victim of attacks. You've heard my stories. As a preacher of the gospel, spirits were oppressing me. Not many people will be honest to tell you this. I know what it means to be free indeed. Hallelujah. Hear me. All these spirit husband, spirit wife, wicked demonic spirit, seeing yourself in secondary school, writing exams that never finish in an old house, dead bodies that have gone calling you back. Don't worry. This is the series that will bring this thing to end once and for all in your life. Before I make the altar call, let me challenge you, please. Please do well to invite your family members to be here or to at least connect. This is not just some church thing. God is in a business of bringing liberty. There are pastors who are watching and following. There are people who are following from across the globe. This is not something to be silent about. You can sow the seed of even giving someone the teaching and say, please listen to this. All these myriads of problems you are saying, God is giving you perspective. Tonight, God simply started with us by answering the question, why? Why the assaults of Satan? It is comforting to know he was created. It is comforting to know that whoever created him can destroy. It is only what does not have a beginning that does not end. If Satan had a day of creation, it is comforting to know a day will come when his end will come. And prophecy has gone ahead of him. Hallelujah. The greatest deliverance is the translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Many times believers do not take altar calls serious. Please listen to me. Rejecting Jesus and rejecting an altar call is still part of the strategy of Satan to keep you bound. There is every legitimate ground he has over your life. If the blood has not opened you up to that new and living way. There are hundreds of people, thousands and potentially millions across the globe listening to me. You know that you need Jesus. Some of you are here right now in this auditorium. All the overflows to the basement outside our Zaria family, our global family. You are here and you know that Jesus is speaking to you. You are saying, Apostle, I am tired. I need to hand everything over to Jesus. Some of you, the devil has destroyed your family members, killed everybody, caused sicknesses. Don't just go back and think this is some church thing. He wants to give you a new beginning. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my heart to Jesus, but as it is right now, I need restoration and I need rededication. I'm only going to count one to five. Those who are in here and around the vicinity, you can come outside. You can move to your, your LED screen. Zaria family, our global family, you are in your house right there. You can make this decision. I'm going to count one to five. Please win that war. I want you to come and join this gentleman who is already standing. Are you ready? Celebrate them as they come. One. Don't be afraid. Come to Jesus. He can give you a new beginning. 
koinonia is this the best you can do jesus is calling them come unto me all ye please stand for space all ye that are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved can i still come absolutely come and join them young and old male and female come to jesus it's time to end this for the sake of your life some of you by coming here your children will thank you when you are telling them the stories of the background you came from if you came from a family of witchcraft let a godly family come out of you if you came from a family of idol worship let a family of righteousness come out of you hallelujah whosoever calls upon the name of the lord the same shall be saved god is no respecter of persons thank you for this bold decision for all of you who are out those of you who are following from your homes your churches following by way of television jesus is giving you an opportunity right now don't reject him it is costly to reject jesus the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment let me encourage those of you who are in front here please if you are joining them quickly come quickly come lift your right hand and say this after me as loud and clear as you can say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word I need your deliverance from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Right now, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I believe that you defeated sin, Satan, hell, and the grave. And you gave me the victory. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. There is no man who can draw men to you except your son. Father, we thank you. You have drawn this man. The Bible says no man comes to the Father. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.